I remember I started to looking for alternatives to the military in when I was 14 year old. That was one of my earlier speculations. And I could I could find very little, but I found a small book by Gandhi in the library. And uh, since then, he has been following me through my life. When I was 18, the government invited me to a course in conflict handling, conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. It was called military service. They want me to, to be trained to kill people. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, thank you. No, I don't like that style of handling conflicts. So I was condemned to 16 months in prison for refusing for the service. I see. And inside that prison, I was together with people who has been committing murder. And mm -hmm. I was there because I refused to kill. So it made me to think and reflect quite a lot. Uh, and I learned a lot about power, political power. Because I was up against NATO, the big NATO army with nuclear weapons and so on. And they wanted to make me a soldier. Mm -hmm. But I realized that that couldn't happen without me cooperating with them. Mm. When I refused to cooperate, they didn't manage to make a soldier out of me. They had the power to punish me, but not to make a soldier out of me. And the feeling of being stronger than NATO when you are 18, 20, that's a very good feeling. Not a single state in the world have trained their own population to nonviolent resistance. I mean, I was, was wondering why could that be? It must be better that they could act in some ways, even if the state believe in the gun. When they have so many young boys who wanted to defend the country and their values, but not with the use of guns, but can't they be trained in, in nonviolence and nonviolent techniques? Yeah. And the only answer I get is that states are afraid of training their own population in nonviolent techniques because it could be used against them, against their own state. So I think they realize the power of it, yes. but they are afraid of, let's say, the present climate movement or the present peace movement. If they were really trained and skilled in nonviolent strategies, mm -hmm. it would be very, very powerful, also against yeah. their own state. Structural violence, the unjust structures that people can't survive because they don't have access to basic needs like food, clean water, medicine, and so on, kills as many every day as the war kids every year is a much more serious problem for humanity, the structural violence. Part of the problem I see is that too many of people around the world are focusing on the state level. They believe the states should solve the problems and the and states are very problematic from a nonviolent perspective. States comes with nationalism, it comes with them and us. You see it in the sports, so you see it in the uh, in the culture. And I think we need to go around that that division that some belongs to one state, some belongs to another state, and see what can we do across these division lines. What we need to do now is the opposite of boycott. And I I have come up with a new term. I want to call it girl cot. The opposite of boy is girl, so girl cot. And that is to cooperate more strongly and eagerly than ever with the best voices inside the Russian society. Those who dare stand up against Putin and are sent to prison because they are criticizing the war. Yeah. So I want massive girl cots all around Europe. I have an article coming out in the Swedish newspaper tomorrow about that. We introduced the concept of girl cot because we need to think ahead. We need to think into the future. When the war ends, all wars will come to an end in the end. And what sort of relations do we want to have with Russia after that? If we boycott all the smartest and best people in Russia today, we are in fact planning for the Cold War 2.0. We are yeah. creating a horrible situation for our kids and grandchildren to take over. If we can't be very friendly with the best of the Russian people. I don't care if you are optimist or pessimist, but it is your damn duty to act as if you were an optimist. <laughs> that is the only decent thing for humans to do. Act as if you were an optimist.
I don't care what you think in, in your heart or in your brain, but your duty is to act now and invite more people to act as if you were an optimist. Do the best you can.